Section 1 You will hear a man phoning to inquire about a job vacancy. First, you'll have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You will see there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good afternoon, Palm Resort. Good afternoon. I am ringing about the job I understand you have vacant. Oh, yes. I'd like to find out some more information, if I may. Yes, of course. Can I take your name? It's Freddie Lee. OK. The man's name is Freddie Lee. So, Freddie Lee has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Good afternoon, Palm Resort. Good afternoon. I am ringing about the job I understand you have vacant. Oh, yes. I'd like to find out some more information, if I may. Yes, of course. Can I take your name? It's Freddie Lee. OK, Freddie. What would you like to know? First of all, I'd like to know where your resort is located. It's near the city centre on Jamieson Island. That's J A M. I E S O N. Oh, brilliant. That's only five minutes from me. I finish at my college on the 12th of May, so I'll be available for work from that date. Will there be any vacancies at that time? Well, summer is our busiest season, beginning on the 11th of July, so that's when you would be starting. Sounds good. And are there any age limitations? That would depend on the place you're applying for. How old are you? I'm 17. Well, we require our bartenders to be 18 or older, which means you would be working as a waiter. There are four vacancies. There were originally six. However, we have since filled two of these. OK, great. Could I ask about the pay? We're offering £5.52 pence an hour. That's very good. My last job was £4.45 an hour. And can I also ask about what qualities you're looking for? Like any particular skills or experience? We don't normally require applicants to have any past experience. However, during the summer season, we have weekly shows in which our waiters are asked to perform. The routines are very simple, so no dancing skills are needed. However, you will need to be able to sing. I have never sung professionally, but I'm keen on it and have been told that I'm talented, so I think this will be a good fit. Are there any other duties that I'd be responsible for? As a waiter, you'll have a few different duties. We offer table service, so you'll have to take food orders from customers and carry the food from the kitchen to their tables. We like to give our customers a relaxed experience so we'll also need you to supervise and take care of their children. I have a babysitter, so I'm very comfortable doing that. Is there a play area for them in the resort? Unfortunately, there is no facility for children here at the resort, but there is a large playground just down the road. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. 
so I would just walk the children down to the playground each day. No, the road is very busy and the pavements are so narrow that it's unsafe to take the children for walks there. It would be very advantageous if you could drive so that you can safely strap the children into the back seat and transport them back and forth. I'm currently taking driving lessons, so if all goes well, I should have my permit by the time I begin work. We feel it's pretty good and we also offer some good fringe benefits for our employees. Really? Well, because of the difficulties of getting public transport, if you're working after 10 o'clock, we drive you home. OK, that sounds fine. Do you have a staff room where I would be able to eat my packed lunches? All of our employees eat in the dining hall once our customers have finished eating their lunch. We like to make sure that our employees are well nourished, so we would provide you with a meal every lunchtime. There is no need to bring in a packed lunch. Wow, that's good to know. I think that's all of the information that I needed. I'll be sure to post my application to you later today. OK, sure. Once we have looked over your application, we may ask you to come for an interview. We normally hold our interviews on Fridays. However, the manager is taking a long weekend this week, so the interview would be on Thursday. Is that OK for you? That's good for me. Fine. 10.30am? Yes, fine. Would 10 o'clock be OK? Perfect. And could you bring along a reference letter from your employer? Yes, that's fine. No problem. Could you tell me what else I have to do? Well, you need to come into the desk and fill out some forms. We need a document for ID, so a bank statement would be fine. I've got that. And what else? Well, you need to bring a photo with you. Having said that, it would be also a good idea for you to attach it to your application. This will help us to distinguish your application from the others. OK, no problem. I have a couple of spares from when I renewed my passport. Good. We look forward to seeing you. OK, thank you so much. You've been very helpful. No problem. Goodbye. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Good morning. Welcome to Green Home, the leading chain of greengrocers in the country. As you walk through the aisles, you will see a variety of discounted items, great deals and offers. Let us start in the grocery. As you know, we provide the best fruit and vegetables that you will ever find in town. At Green Home, you will see three sections, GM food, organic food and fair trade products. Genetically modified groceries are the cheapest and today we have products for an unbeatable price £1.57 for a kilo of baking potatoes, 28 pence for a lemon and we also have half a dozen free range eggs at 60 pence. Now, if you are environmentally friendly and opt for organic food, then you cannot miss out on our exclusive fresh island carrots for only £1.99, irresistible organic courgettes at £2.09 and yummy Brussels sprouts for only £1.59. You are also welcome to the fruit section where you'll find organic raspberries, £4.55 and black cherries for only £3.75. We also have fair trade products, and we make sure that one third of the price you pay is sent to the producer in a developing country Caribbean bananas a developing country. Caribbean bananas are available at £2.09 and Chilean grapes are only £3.87. Obviously, you can take a look at the aisle opposite the grocery and find a variety of freshly squeezed juices at a bargain price. Grapefruit squashes are only £2.85 each and if you get two of them, you will get a bottle of apple and black currant squash for free. If you are in need of cleaning, then you've come to the right place. If you are looking for the best in laundry care, then you must check out our latest special offers on a range of washing powders and softeners. You can take advantage of our buy two and get one free promotion. If you get two pomegranate and orange blossom washing powders, you can get a third one or if you buy two jasmine and lavender softeners, you can have a crystal rain and white lily washing powder for free. 
Other cleaning products have special offers too and you should definitely see the amazing 20% discount on a new brand washing up liquid, oven cleaner and degreaser. You can also have a 30% discount on drain unblocking products if you get our own label plug hole and sink cleaner. Kitchenware is also provided here, and you will be astonished by our exclusive apron and will be astonished by our exclusive apron and oven glove for only £12.50. You also get a free stainless steel peeler if you purchase a saucepan with glass lid. You can make some delicious pasta with bolognese sauce there. Or you can have a free aluminium foil if you buy a sandwich tin or a 12-cup deep bun tray. Your homemade cake recipes will be mouth-watering. Finally, you can have a useful corkscrew when you purchase a bottle of our finest red and white wines. They are imported from France, Portugal, Spain, Argentina, Brazil and Chile. Our shops are open from Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. and weekends and bank holidays from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you for shopping at Green Home and we hope to see you again soon. Section 3 You will hear Sally and Mike, two students and their professor talking about their classwork. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hello, Sally and Mike. Hello, Hello Professor. Professor. Welcome to the third meeting of our After School Club, where we discuss topics from the syllabus in order to help you to understand your classwork better. Now, I hope that you've read the notes I gave you last week on the ancient African traditions, as this will be the focus of our discussion today. Who can tell me how they were able to recognize different stars? Did they measure the distance between them? Uh, no, Sally, I'm afraid that's incorrect. Mike, do you know the answer? Historians used to think that the ancient Africans recognized stars by observing the manner in which they affected each other. But further research showed that they used the location of the stars in order to distinguish one from the other. Well done, Mike. Very good. Can either of you tell me anything about the Wayaka people? They have a lot of money, but do not trust banks to keep it safe. They believe that it's in their best interest to help themselves, not assist others. Instead, the tribe looks after their own finances and generate income from lending money to others in low-interest loans. What problems do the Africans suffer from? They used to suffer greatly from drought. However, they have now developed clever ways of overcoming it by moving to higher land. There are, however, far more predators in these mountainous areas, so it is vital that the Africans learn how to protect themselves in this new environment. Yes, that's right. Also, compared to more developed countries, the Africans are less concerned with their international status, which I find interesting. Very good. What else are the local people concerned with? Unlike other, poorer tribes, they have plenty of nourishing food, and they are able to afford vaccines that prevent them from catching diseases. They historically lived in the west of Africa, although later they were chased off their land by other tribes competing for food and water. It is their hope that they will eventually be able to return to their original homeland. Why has the financial condition of the African people deteriorated? Despite their modern transportation system, they find it very difficult to trade because their tools are not sophisticated enough to mine minerals from the land. They have permission to engage in these commercial activities. So, once they have the right tools, they will be able to develop a very large income from trade. Do you think that this new income will stop Africans suffering from starvation in the near future? Unfortunately, I don't think so. They should be able to start trading next year but they will only have enough income to start growing sufficient food and crops to support the local people in the long-term future. Yes, that's correct. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, 
You have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now, listen and answer questions 27 to 30. There are many charities from developed countries that are helping to ship food to African countries in order to feed the starving. Unfortunately, it is difficult to transport a lot of food to the right places, but Africans are very good at sharing and making sure that everyone gets something to eat. African governments are also starting to pay more attention to the needs of their people. They have been directing a lot of money to help build schools in the more impoverished villages as a part of their new education plan, which is fantastic. This means that, hopefully, all African children will be able to attend school daily without having to walk long distances. Yes, absolutely. Do you remember any other information from your class notes? Historically, the tribes in Africa often used to migrate across the country in search of food and water. They would live in tents that were easy to dismantle and transport to other locations. That's true, but now they are being encouraged to settle down in one area so they can establish colonies and build facilities for themselves, such as houses and schools. Some villages have even developed specific customs. For example, the Wayaka people consider it impolite if you do not bring gifts when visiting someone. Bravo! You've both contributed fantastic points to our conversation. That concludes our session for today. I'll see you next week. That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Good morning, everyone. As you know, this is week two and if you open your module booklet, you will see that this lecture is titled Introduction to Physical Forces. The first question I'd like to look at is, what is force? Well, in physics, force refers to any factor that can influence or cause an object to undergo a change in shape, speed or direction. Mechanical stress can cause deformation, or physical movements can cause acceleration, for instance. In order to acquire knowledge of physical forces, you have to master Newton's laws. Newton's first law was influenced by Galileo's ideas on constant velocity in the absence of a net force. Newton came up with the concept of innate inertia. When there is a solid object in a state of equilibrium, the object continues to move at a constant speed. Therefore, Newton's first law examines the relationship between inertia and the concept of relative velocities. Newton's second law regards the presence of unbalanced force acting upon the object. Newton proposed that force is in direct proportion to acceleration. If we are aware of the acceleration of an object moving and the mass of the object, then we can calculate the force. Finally, Newton's third law is also known as the action-reaction law. Has anyone heard of this law yet? Basically, Newton realized that forces interact with other objects. For example, while the first objector exerts force F on object B, then object B exerts a force F on object A although these forces are in opposite directions, they have the same magnitude. 
These force pairs occur simultaneously, and the net force is zero in other words the internal forces are not zero. In other words, the internal forces are not unbalanced. Now, let us consider some physical forces. Equilibrium is divided into static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium. Static equilibrium refers to objects at rest. Since they are at rest, their net force is zero. If there is an object on the surface of the Earth, we will see that there is the force of gravity which pulls it down and an upward force called normal force. There is no acceleration and the result is zero. On the other hand, dynamic inertia considers the movement of an object at a constant velocity. If you apply a force to this object and it starts moving, kinetic friction reacts against it. The result is a zero net force, but the object carries on moving with a non-zero velocity. Gravity is a universal force towards the Earth. Galileo considered a free fall case and he discovered that when objects fall down, the acceleration is constant regardless of the mass of the object. Today this force is known as g and its magnitude is 9.81 m per square second. A body or an object will experience a force and this force is determined by multiplying the mass of the object by the gravity Newton then came up with an object by the gravity. Newton then came up with the law of gravitation with regard to celestial movements. The normal force has resulted from the force of repulsion between atoms. The normal force reacts to an external force that pushes an object, for example. It thus maintains the object integrity. Friction resists the relative motion and it is divided into static friction and kinetic friction. While static friction is opposing the applied force that is parallel to the surface, the kinetic force is independent of the forces applied to an object. Any questions so far? We shall continue to define other physical forces next week. Check your answers.